Welcome to Novo Ed Talks, where we reveal real-world strategies and expert insights from learning and development professionals. In every episode, we chat with practitioners, course designers, learning strategists, and business leads. We hear about their experiences in the learning industry and predictions for the profession and the trends that they're seeing. But before we get started, a little bit about NovoEd. Founded at Stanford's Social Algorithms Lab in 2012, NovoEd is a people-centric, capability-building platform that combines social and collaborative learning to drive performance readiness at scale. Through cohort-based experiences centered around human interaction, NovoEd taps into collective wisdom, placing each learner at the center of perspective, application, and expertise. Large enterprises such as 3M, GE, Marriott International, and Nestle partner with NovoEd to accelerate their critical initiatives, reconnect teams, and achieve rapid alignment through learning that is felt, experienced, and swiftly transformed into impact. Now, let's meet our guest for today's episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Novo Ed Talks podcast, a space for training trailblazers to get real. My name is Melissa Fisk. I am the producer of the Novo Ed Talks podcast, and today I am joined by Megan Harkless, who is an organizational psychologist. Megan is an experienced organizational psychologist who specializes in enhancing both individual and organizational performance by understanding and improving workplace dynamics. Her academic background includes a master's in organizational psychology from Columbia University and has provided her with a profound understanding of human behavior and change management. This expertise enables her to design and implement training programs that not only elevate employee skill sets, but also foster a culture of continuous development. Megan, welcome to the Novo Ed Talks podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Well, I cannot wait to hear your responses to some of our questions because I just feel like you've got a really good, deep understanding of learners. So why don't you start by just kind of introducing yourself a little bit more? Sure. I'm an organizational psychologist, as you'd mentioned, and I've dealt with different industries and around the country, actually. And I help organizations manage change and develop their people. I've worked on large scale transformation initiatives, leadership development and strategic planning. And generally, the goal of organizational psychology is to blend psychological insight with practical business strategies, because you want to make sure you're actually driving real sustainable change. And I focus on improving collaboration, enhancing operational efficiency, and fostering environments where individuals and teams thrive. I love that. I love that you're taking, you know, obviously the business work-life environment, but taking like hey, how do humans actually work approach to yeah. it? And a lot of times people forget that, unfortunately. Yes. They just, they're like, I'm going to hit this goal. And it's like, well, you have to bring the people along too. Yes, 100%. So I think your role is so important and so necessary. Um, can you speak a little bit to kind of who some of your learners have been in some of the work that you've done and what some of their biggest challenges have been? Sure. So the, the learners range from executives to leaders on the front line uh, across many sectors. And really the the largest issue generally comes from adapting to change. And that could be learning a new technology, shifting an organizational culture, enhancing leadership capabilities. All of that creates a lot of discomfort within employees and can make it hard to get to that next step. And so that's where I would come in. And many struggle with overcoming resistance to change or to manage the stress of the change or wanting to know how to foster an effective collaboration, especially as a lot of companies are going hybrid, remote, back to work, and to office, it's it's changing at a rapid pace. And so that's, those learners expand across many different platforms. Yeah, I bet. And how do you kind of approach some of those, or how do you suggest organizations approach those different types of challenges? Well, I think you have to make sure it's resonating with a diverse multi-generational workforce that's also aligned with the organization's broader goals. And that can be the challenge really, because there are different needs dependent on your age, your experience, your background. And so a lot of times companies are trying to tackle this by using data-driven insights and they tailor the programs to that. And then what we try to do on top of that is combine psychological pr principles with practical applications. A lot 
experiment, experiential, sorry, experiential learning is very effective because people can test things out and say this works or this doesn't work and then readjust. But it, there's always a nuance between reality and theory. And a lot of times things are good in theory, but you have to actually work out the nuances to make th- make sure things are working in practice. Yeah. And then another challenge is also how do you measure long-term impact? Because that's specifically culture change could take a long time. And so you have to make sure that you're you're tracking that behavior and performance over time and checking in and seeing how that's adjusting, or you're not going to get a real um, insight into what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. I love that you mentioned that just like the long-term like tracking as well, just because I think that's something that people, you know, just by nature of kind of the fast paced society we live in now too, it's like everyone wants like results or answers are like, Hey, I need to know where this is at in six months, if I'm going to justify it or whatever. And it's like, Hey, if you really want to see effective change, you kind of have to give it a little bit more time. (laughs) Yeah. And that's why it requires strategy because you need to be saying, okay, I know this is going to be hard. Is there going to be a dip? When does this start to go up? When are you checking in? And then over the course of time, you can see that these things start to build and improve. Yeah, absolutely. With the rise of remote work and virtual collaboration, how has kind of the approach to learning and development adapted, do you think, to ensure that employees are equipped with the necessary skills for some of these either entirely remote or hybrid workplaces? Yeah, it's it's been really interesting since COVID. And now we're going more back into the workplace in a lot of situations, but it's it's definitely forced us to have to focus on new skills. And so a lot of times remote work has required companies to focus on enhancing digital collaboration skills. Um, emotional te- intelligence via and virtual environments is very important. And that was a skill that a lot of people didn't have before. You're reading the nuances of a face or sometimes they're not even showing themselves and you're listening to the, their voice and trying to understand what's being heard, what actions need to be taken and what are our next steps. And then self-management is really important and making sure you're giving employees that opportunity to develop that, because especially if you're working remote, they need to make sure that that those skills are being developed rather than having someone watching their day-to-day. And a lot of times employees are working a lot harder at home, and so that's why they have to be able to manage their, their time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how do you suggest teams kind of identify and address skills gaps within their organization? There's a few things you can do. Uh, Assessments are really helpful, especially as an organizational psychologist. We love assessments. You can do individual assessments, group assessments, and you can, it really helps you see where there's gaps and where you need to focus on developing, whether that be training or just a whole new goal system. 360 degree feedback is really great. Dependent on if you have people who are willing to give thorough feedback and the time they have to commit to that. But if you if you get 360 feedback, you generally get more thorough feedback that you can act upon. And then organizational diagnostics that kind of say, okay, here are the skill gra- gaps. Um, a lot of times when you use these methods, then the companies can say, okay, we have technical competencies that need improvement, but we also have soft skills like communication and adaptability that need to be improved. And how are we improving those? And that could be through training programs, coaching, mentorship initiatives, lots of different ways to make sure it's growing. So, yeah, absolutely. The communication one is a big one. I think that was something I have always worked remote. So I feel like I have a, a different, a little bit of a different perspective on that. But you notice that I feel like during COVID yeah. is how you just became very hyper aware of how people communicated or what they didn't communicate or things like yes. that. You were like, oh, wait. Yeah. And I, I remember I I am very good at reading a room. That's a, a skill set that I'm, I'm very good at. And then having to become more remote, realizing that you needed to read the room in a very different way because you're reading it virtually. Yeah. And seeing what's landing, what's not landing, reading the facial expressions or, you know. Yeah. It's, it's a new world that's being developed at a really high, high paced. Yeah. Way. Yeah, Absolutely. Do you think that there are specific kind of like core KPIs that people should be reporting or tracking um, to measure the effectiveness of some of these programs? Specifically with organizational psychology, you're going to want to do both quantitative. So it's it's both the hard data and stuff. And so hard data is easier 
obviously you're running the numbers saying if you're, there's growth, but you, then that's when you need to be doing the assessments and checking and saying, where are the soft skills weak? And are, and if they're weak, how are you improving them? And then checking over time. A lot of times those KPIs include key performance areas, employee engagement levels, retention rates. And then you look at those performance metrics and then you can say, where do the interventions need to be? Mm-hmm. Another crucial me- measure is employee feedback and really listening to it and saying, okay, let's readjust or not readjust. Let's focus here because this is what we were told we we're doing well. And then being open to, to continuing that feedback loop. And I see a lot of companies that are really moving in that direction of listening more so that they can make sure they're doing this in real time all the time versus one time a year. And then, yes. Yeah. I love that all the, in real time, all the time, especially just with the way things are just so, you know, technology, new tools, new software is coming out at such a rapid pace, like to have, you got to be checking it more than once a year. <laughs> like, oh, just, yeah. like, because you've got to be seeing where people are at and, and what, they, what they're doing, what they have found to do their jobs better or what they found to make their jobs harder or things like that. And so readjust. I, so yeah. part of the issue with one time a year is that even if you think you're analyzing a whole year, you're not, you're analyzing last few months, people generally don't have the ability to reflect back on an entire 12 months. And so you're really only focusing on this, that last quarter anyway. And so Mm -hmm. you want to be like, where are we at at each step of the way so that you don't lose all of that time to readjust before you're too far in the hole, not hitting the goals that you're, you're chasing. I love that. I think that's so important and such a good message. Um, Do you have an example of a successful case study from an organization or just from um, some of the work that you've done of an L&D initiative that significantly impla- ooh, excuse me, impacted employee performance and contribute, contributed to the overall success of an organization? Yeah, we've done right currently right now I'm um, working with developing change agent program, which has been really effective in helping develop skills to move through difficult changes. But one that I'm thinking about even more is that a few years ago, we did a leadership training program or developed this program that combined public speaking, financial acumen, and leadership soft skills. And it went over the course of a year and it was different segments. And it was also about building a team so that there was a a resource group of people that you can rely on as you go through this development. And we saw, because we had to do the qualitative and quantitative data um, background there on that, that there was an increase in team cohesion and communication and that the participants majority of them were promoted after that program, but that we noticed that they said that they reported increased effectiveness in their leadership roles because they had gone through that. So it's important that you're focusing on the hard and soft skills at the same time to really get the best results. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what role does technology play or or maybe should technology play in L&D programs? And are there specific like tools or platforms that you think folks should be using? and leveraging for them? Well, AI is is a big one. Um, You know, technology is integral to a lot of programs. And I see a lot of companies beginning to leverage AI-driven platforms. And that will just continue to be the case because we're moving into a new world with that. And that's going to provide personalized learning experience. And, you know, you can collaborate tools to foster continuous learning have real-time information in a way that we really haven't had prior to this. And it's going to allow companies to scale globally in a way that they hadn't been able to before. So it's going to be an adventure. Yeah, absolutely. It's so exciting to hear how everyone's starting to use it too and their perspectives on it. But Mm -hmm. I think we've definitely kind of passed the point where it's like, where people are I think there's definitely still folks out there who are intimidated by it or scared by it. But I think most folks that we've spoken to here on this podcast anyway, that are in L and D are very much so like, yeah, it's here. We're you like, we're using it. We have to be using it. We're like trying to figure out how best to use it. You know, everyone's in that state, but I think it's, you know, it's funny if you would talk to folks like a year ago, I feel like people were like, eh, still kind of a little skeptical. Oh my gosh, yes. I remember in school, that was a big part of our training as an organizational psychology was saying that this was coming and it hadn't come yet. Wow. And this was only three years ago where they were like, this is on the horizon. We expect it in five to 10 years. And I remember thinking that it seemed a little sci- sci-fi and I wasn't sure that it would, it would be the revolutionary that they thought it was going to be. Yeah. 
And then, you know, continuing to learn, I pay very close attention to, and I've gotten some other certifications in AI. And it's it's just transformative and it's exciting and and all the things that it'll be able to do. But it's it's certainly, I think people are starting to realize that it's here and how can we use it to make sure we're really effective. So yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, thinking about the learning and development industry just in general, you know, and looking back over the past five years, obviously we've spoken a little bit how things have changed and shifted, like in a post-COVID world, but what are some key takeaways that you've seen from the past five years? the importance of flexibility. So like one of the number one things we I had learned and then I continue to see in the corporate world, and I think really we're just touching on it as we move into a new world with AI, that learning agility will be the number one thing that's going to be important. So I think the flexibility has become very obvious that people need to be flexible. And then that ability to learn different things quickly, readjust is just going to become even more important. Um, and I think not only do you need to learn how to adjust and use the new technologies that comes out because it's evolving quickly and you'll learn something, you'll learn something else, but it's that interaction of human um, mm -hmm. behaviors and needs along with the technology is going to be even more important. People who can understand those nuances are going to be more equipped to be able to, to tackle the challenges as they get ahead. So, yeah, absolutely. I love that. Um, and then on the flip side of that, you know, looking ahead, maybe five years, what do you see um, kind of shaping the future of LMD? Obviously, we talked a little bit about AI, but do you want to expand upon that? Or do you think there are other like trends or emerging technologies that are, are really going to shape the way? I think we don't know what five years will look like. I think there it's going to change so fast that there will be things we don't even know are coming that are exciting, but it's going to change really quickly. But I think that if you're developing a very strong learning and development program, you are focusing on emotional intelligence, adaptability, collaboration, and number one, learning agility, because the complexities of these hybrid workforces, whether you're remote or you're in person or you're combined, it's going to be the cornerstone of organizational culture moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. That's a, that's a good one. And it actually hasn't come up too much on the podcast before. So I like that you've shared that. Uh, Megan, as kind of a fun send off, what advice would you give those just stepping into a leadership role? I like this question. <laughs> so I was thinking what, if I had one thing that I wanted to tell leaders, it would be that leadership isn't about having all the answers. It's about asking the right questions. Mm, I love that. That yeah. could be a good, like, motivational quote <laughs> and, and many leaders offices <laughs> I should be well Megan thank you so much for joining us on the Nova Wood Talks podcast today it was such a pleasure having you on it was so nice I loved this so thank you for having me and thank you to our listeners for tuning in to another episode